All right. How you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing well today. Today we have a question about low EMF saunas. This is from Linda. It says, hi, Matt. Thanks so much for your reviews. You mentioned last month that you were working on an EMF class, but it looks like you haven't gotten it finished yet. I have not. Sorry about that. Um, is there a quick way to know if what sauna companies are showing us is really low EMF or not? I saw your other videos about a cell phone being 20 and sauna companies saying their sauna is less than 10 to mislead us consumers. That's correct. We don't have the budget or the know-how to buy EMF meters, but is there a layman's way to understand it quickly so we can know if we should buy this one or not? Thanks a bunch if you have time to respond, uh, Linda. Okay, so hi, Linda. Um, buy this one. It would be really helpful if you just told me which sauna, but I think what you're trying to say is you're trying to have confidence that you can evaluate a particular sauna. Maybe you're looking at a couple or you're researching and it's the same old thing. I've been through this. Every sauna company tells you that theirs is the best. They all have this little marketing ploy where they go through the things and show you why their sauna is better. Then they get to the EMF stuff and it kind of goes like, Phew! kind of like, you know, way over your head and they're using all kinds of crazy terms and they talk about micron ranges of the heaters and some have better emissivity and oh, then another company will say, oh, you got to have full spectrum or you can't get a complete detox. And then it's like, you know, I know this stuff inside and out because I've heard it hundreds, if not thousands of times, right? And so one company will say near infrared is better than far infrared. And the other one will say, oh no, you've got to have, you know, this, that, and the other. And <laughs> the same thing happens with the EMF. So I'm assuming that, um, yeah, I can, I can pretty much help you. I don't know if I can create, what do I have in here? I don't know if I can create a demonstration for you. Um, here's what I can do. If you don't have EMF meters and you just want a layman's way to understand if a company is being truthful with you or not so that you can make a sound purchase decision, I'm pretty sure that's where you are based on what you've said. Here's the deal. It's like I say in all my videos. Number one, if a sauna company is being pushy, or they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes, or they say things like, like you said, a cell phone has an EMF level of 20, our sauna is less than 10, it's nothing to worry about. As a general rule, if they're doing stuff like that, it's not in good faith, right? It's misleading. Um, a cell phone puts out RF radiation, like I said in the other video. A sauna primarily has electric and magnetic fields. That's what EMF stands for, is electromagnetic fields. Now, in layman's terms, here's where most people and sauna companies go wrong. When they show you a singular EMF level, it's just showing you magnetic. Well, that's only one half of what EMF stands for. They should be showing you electric fields, magnetic fields, and RF radiation. They should be showing you three things. And if they're really good or really sticklers for it, like I am, you should look at body voltage so that you can back that stuff up. Everyone's going to have a different opinion about this. Some people are going to say that, you know, electric fields don't matter and all the only, you know, peer-reviewed studies or scientific studies for that matter um, have been done on electric fields or um, I'm sorry, on magnetic fields and the harmful effects of them. But I'm the, the belief and in, in the mindset that if there are saunas out there that don't have electric fields or magnetic fields, why aren't we using them? And so there's also other sauna companies out there that will say, you know, you can buy a cheap sauna, but you've got to buy this, you know, $8,000 sauna or something that's, there's an increase in price somewhere just so that you can get low electric fields, low magnetic fields, low body voltage, low RF radiation. That shouldn't be the case. Every sauna should be like this. It doesn't really cost that much more money um, to clean the saunas up and make them not have any EMF at all. And so, you know, where, where do I begin, right? <laughs> um, let me just read through this and make sure I, I don't know how to show you in one little concise two minute clip um, how to see if a sauna company is lying to you or not other than, you know, if they're just showing you one type of EMF level. So like if they've got a tri-field meter, if they have a Gauss meter, if they have anything like that and they have a little video and they go through, like there's tons of companies that post the screenshots of their tri-field analog 100XE meter, right? And but those things, I mean, there could be other stuff in the sauna that that meter is not picking up because they're just showing you, you know, one type of measurement on one setting. So as a general rule, the only EMF reviews or the only true low EMF saunas that you can trust are going to be live video tests. None of this third party, you know, verification, inner tech or blah, blah tech, whatever, where they take a heater out of the sauna, send it to a lab in another state and then come back with these low measurements. Well, what about all the EMF that's still in the sauna from the wiring, from the other eight heaters? You know, you just took one out and stuck it in the lab, hang it from a rope, you know, and do this little, it's worthless. It's, it's 
propaganda for the marketing team to try to sell you or one up a sauna competitor. And so we've got this war going on with sauna companies where they're all trying to be better than the next guy, right? So they can sell more saunas. When in fact, usually the saunas are pretty similar or pretty, pretty close, right? And so they come up with these crazy things to fight with each other. And what happens is the misfortune of the consumer is that you get caught up in that, I'll just call it a disaster, <laughs> a marketing disaster. Number one, it's misinformation. Number two, it's misleading as hell to consumers because it doesn't take any extra effort to educate you the right way on EMFs. But number three, it would force them to come out with a better product, but it may cost more money or, you know, there's all kinds of things going on. So as a general rule, if a sauna company has a third-party EMF report and they're telling you that's what you should base your purchase on, bullshit. If they're showing you, you know, a video or a screenshot of a single EMF meter on one setting, because you should have at least two or three different measurements if it's really being tested for EMF. You should see electric field measurements, which will be in volts per meter. You should also see uh, gauss meter measurements, which will be in milligauss. So as a general rule, you want to see under one milligauss in the seated position throughout the entire sauna. You don't want to see any huge spikes. Um, that would be kind of alarming. You'd have to double check that stuff. And then for uh, electric fields, you want to have something that's under 200 volts per meter. Now, most what most sauna companies do is they only show you magnetic fields. So they'll go in a sauna with a gauss meter and they'll show you how low it is. However, if they were to swap out that gauss meter with an electric field meter and go in there, you'd have 1200 volts per meter of electric fields, which is sky high, right? That's gonna give you a body voltage level of over 20,000 millivolts or over 20 volts, right? Way too high. Because there's other saunas that don't cost any more money that are exactly the same price, like the ones on the certified sauna list. If you wanna see that, just Google the list of certified saunas. You can see everything that I test on live video. We use the same meters, we check everything, blah, 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 you've seen it before. Anyway, so what most sauna companies do is this little bait and switch. You know, they'll tell you that EMF, is, it's like the, the guy that just asked me the other day about some something health saunas, and they have a screenshot on their website, and it just says, you know, uh, it's the same thing that the other cats do at the big company. You know, um, such and such appliance is, is less than this, or is this much EMF, and our sauna has, you know, less than this. You shouldn't be worried about it. It's not that big of a deal, blah, blah, blah. But meanwhile, they're only talking about one part of the EMF. <laughs> so the, that, that's pretty much the dead giveaway in layman's terms without being able to demonstrate. Um, if, if you can't buy meters, you don't want to learn how to use them, just don't have time, don't have the money. I understand. Maybe you just don't have the health. You know, at times I had so much brain fog, I couldn't understand this stuff. It just didn't make sense to me. I could sit there and read it and, and think about it and listen to the sauna salespeople try to sell me. And still, at the end of the day, I was like, oh my God, I just need to feel better. This is too much, you know, blah, blah, blah. So without, without creating a demonstration to, to show you what I'm talking about, that would be my best guess, really, um, in layman's terms. If you're working with a, a sauna company and they start talking to you about EMF and they only tell you there's one level, you know right off the bat that they are either not being truthful with you, they're not educated themselves, or number three, they just don't care about mitigating all types of EMF for their customers, in which I don't think you should do business with them. I wouldn't. Um, so let's see if there's anything else in here. Um, low EMF sauna companies are only showing you half the truth. That's true. We covered that. The E in EMF stands for electric fields. The M in EMF stands for magnetic fields. That's two types of EMF. So EMF is not a singular term like most sauna companies would have you believe. Um, it's two things. <laughs> Um, we talked about the 30, 30, third party, uh, marketing reports for the EMF stuff. Uh, we talked about Gauss meters showing low readings, but having ultra high as a general. Okay. So here's the deal. As a general rule, most of the carbon sauna powered, uh, or, or carbon heater powered saunas that have the big black carbon heaters in them. As a general rule, those are lower magnetic fields, but they have sky high electric fields. And so you want to make sure that the company is showing you electric fields if you're working with a carbon sauna. Now on the flip side, as a general rule, ceramic sauna companies that use the ceramic rod heaters or concave, you know, any kind of ceramic heater, as a general rule, they have a grounded heat shield in front of them, which cuts down on a lot of the electric fields. However, that doesn't block magnetic fields. So generally they have higher uh, magnetic fields, except if you're looking at the certified sauna, um, ceramic saunas. Those have been vetted by me. Those are all low. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you want, what I could do is, 
you know, if you just send me a brand name of something, uh, I could set up a test for you. You know, we could put one of the sauna companies to the test if you really wanted to see it. But I don't know how much impact that would have for you since you're not interested in buying meters or you don't want to get into testing them. And you really just kind of want to decipher whether a company is being truthful with you or not uh, based on how they're handling you. I think that's the best way. Um, if I miss something or you have other questions, uh, let me know and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Have a great day, guys.